the tactile dimension, a method for physicalizing touch behaviors. Touch is an essential modality for interacting with the world. Gesture and touch are our primary means of early communication, and touch remains a fundamental way of exploring and communicating throughout our lives. Recent interest in data physicalization has brought touch into the focus of visualization research. Touch is also highly relevant to tangible interfaces and touch perception research. Yet technologies for tracking touch on 3D objects can be expensive, technology-intensive, or interfere with the tactile experience of the object. Our goal in this research is to first create a method that produces a physical record of touch that address these gaps in the technology, and second, to demonstrate the ways this method could be used in the HCI and data visualization communities. To meet our needs, an effective tracer method should create an accurate and persistent record of where the object was touched, work with arbitrary shapes, not only flat surfaces, be applicable to a range of materials and settings, not interfere with the tactile experience. Through our experiments, we identify a tracer substance and application method that fulfills these criteria to demonstrate how our method may be used in HCI, data visualization, and other research fields, we conduct three case studies that both validate our approach and suggest directions for future work. The first user study tests the method through physicalizing basic touch behaviors on a variety of 2D and 3D objects. The second user study physicalizes touch traces on the same two objects for a variety of different tasks. The third user study physicalizes touch traces to evaluate two data physicalizations of time series data. Detailed results from all these studies and from the tracer selection process are available in the paper. Selecting a tracer. The first step in our process was selecting a tracer and application method that would meet our criteria, as described previously. During our testing, we explored a range of UV fluorescent materials, such as gels, powders, and inks, for documenting traces, as seen in the images on this slide. We also tried two different approaches to tracking touch in the subtractive method, the UV material was applied to the object, and touches became visible on the object through the removal of UV material as a person touched the object. In the additive method, the UV material was applied to the person's hands, and touches became visible on the object through the addition of UV material to the object as the person touched it. When testing the subtractive method, we tried a variety of ways to uniformly apply the material to the objects, such as airbrushes and rollers. We compared the performance of the methods through a simple touched pattern and evaluated the outcomes using a variety of visual metrics, such as luminance and contrast. Through this process, we found that using glow germ powder applied to the model with an airbrush using the subtractive method was the best option. Using glow germ powder with an additive method where the powder was applied to the participant's hands also produced strong results, but was a messier process and potentially less pleasant for study participants. After selecting a tracer, the goal of our first user study was to use this method to physicalize touch behaviors on 2D and 3D objects. This user study provided an opportunity for us to validate the touch tracing method we'd selected by exploring simple tasks on a variety of objects. Participants were asked to perform simple tasks on four different objects, such as touching all the peaks on the model or tracing a path between two points. The objects were selected to broadly represent fields of work where touch tracing might be relevant. Eleven participants completed these tasks. The top row shows each of the objects in the study under white light. The bottom row shows example outcomes under UV light from the touch tasks completed on the object. Overall, we see that the method successfully captures the touches of a variety of participants completing different types of tasks. All materials captured touch well, though the laser cut edges of the 3D bar chart were less reliable than the other surfaces. After validating our tracer method on a variety of objects, the goal of user study two was to physicalize touch traces on the same object for different tasks. This approach lets us begin to explore whether people's touches on objects are motivated by the shape of the object or the task they are completing. We use two objects in this study, big gauss and little gauss. Both objects are made of Gaussian functions, are intended to be ambiguous, and open to a variety of interpretations. Each participant interacted with each model in two different ways. In one case, the model was described as a data representation, physicalizing either biology data for big Gauss or weather data for little Gauss. In the other case, the model was described as a landscape, and participants were asked to either chart a path through the terrain for big Gauss or predict where the lava would flow on the terrain for little Gauss. Eight participants completed this study. Here we see the touch results from one participant in response to each of the questions. 
The touch traces were captured first by photographing the model under UV light. These traces were then mapped to digital models, so they could be interacted with more similarly to touch traces experienced in the real world when viewing the physicalization in person. Touch outcomes from participants show different patterns of touching the models that seem to reflect the framing of the models as either data or terrain and the particulars of the questions being asked. We also created virtual models that document the cumulative touch traces across participants by overlaying them. These visualizations show the touch patterns of all eight participants. This approach allows us to begin to understand the extent to which patterns of touch persist for the same question across participants. Many of the patterns seen in the touch patterns of the single participant persist. A focus on the top of the peaks for the bacteria samples and one particular peak for the flooding questions. We also see some divergence between individual participants. Overall, the study suggests that our touch tracking method may support researchers in exploring the ways in which touch might be driven by tasks themselves versus the objects. Finally, user study three explores touch tracking on data physicalization and how touch information might support the evaluation of physical data displays. We created two data physicalizations of COVID-19 data for the study. Each physicalization shows excess mortality in countries from January 2020 to December 2021. The deeper the valley, the more excess mortality there was at that time. One model on the left represents excess mortality in one country and presents time as a spiral. The second model on the right represents excess mortality in five countries and presents time linearly. Participants were asked three questions about the models. The first question asked them to interact with both models and to determine what line on the linear model best matched the data shown on the spiral model. In the second and third questions, participants considered each model individually, identifying high points and low points of excess mortality. Twelve participants responded to these questions. The models were photographed under UV light and image processed. Outcomes from one participant are shown here. We see that our method successfully captured the touches on the model and that participants touched different areas of the model in response to the questions. We also see both the presence of additive and subtractive traces on the model. Though we continue to use the subtractive touch tracking approach, in practice, the models display both kinds of traces. The image on the left shows the overall traces as photographed. The middle image highlights the subtractive traces documented by our method in blue, that is, the dark areas of the photograph where the UV powder was removed. The image on the right shows the additive traces documented by our method in blue. That is, the bright areas of the photograph where additive UV powder was deposited through touch. In this case, small amounts of the powder accumulated on the participant's hand as they touched the model and was later redeposited on the model through additional touches. In question two of user study three, participants were asked to identify the point on the spiral timeline with the least amount of excess mortality. This moment occurred at the beginning of the pandemic or the inner starting point of the spiral. From the touch patterns, we can see that participants had considerable touch around and past the start of the spiral. The spiral on the left shows this through additive touch traces at the center of the spiral, while on the right we see a subtractive touch tracing that goes well beyond the actual starting point of the spiral. The touch tracing helps identify ambiguity in the model, the uncertainty of the participants around its starting point. Overall, this method provides a low-cost and low-tech way to record touch on a variety of objects. At the same time, it may not be suitable for all applications and researchers should keep a few considerations in mind. First, the traces documented by this process are aggregate. They provide a cumulative account of touch and do not include time information. Second, the traces are a data physicalization themselves, and as such, they are best viewed and made sense of on the model itself. Photographs or photographs mapped onto 3D models provide one way to further document the traces, but may not capture their richness. Third, traces do not directly map to types of touch or the intent of touch. This is a challenge faced by most touch tracking methods and can be addressed through triangulation with other data sources such as video or interviews. Finally, due to the variability of materials and their properties, the application of the powder on the models can require practice before a uniform coding can be regularly applied. Overall, this method has the potential to contribute to a number of research areas, such as work on multimodal sensing, product design, human-robot interaction, or psychology research. Researchers could use this method to better understand the design and use of data physicalizations in the context of public communication of data. This method could also contribute to a larger effort to clarify the relationship between intent and action and identify mappings between touch and touch patterns. Please see our paper for additional areas of future work.